In the previous lessons, what we have looked at is the properties having to do with parallel lines. In specific, we looked at four of them. Uh, what we learned, it should say here in part A, uh, so recall in part A that we learned the following, that if two lines are parallel, then, so if these two lines are parallel, which we know that they're parallel based on the fact that they have these arrows on them, if they're parallel, we can state a number of things. We can state, first of all, that the alternate interior angles are equal. So two angles that fall on alternate sides of the transverse line inside the parallel lines, like these two, uh, are equal to each other by the by the fact that we are using and have parallel lines. Uh, we can also state that corresponding angles, like these two, which are on corresponding sides of the parallel lines and corresponding sides of the transversal, we can state that the corresponding angles are equal to each other if those two lines are parallel. Uh, thirdly, we can state that interior angles on the same side of the transversal, so angles that are inside the parallel lines, um, <clears throat> And on the same side of the transversal, we can state that they add up to 180 degrees. Uh, the fourth thing we can state if we have parallel lines is that alternate exterior angles, so these two yellow highlighted angles, which are on the outside of the parallel lines and on alternate sides of the transversal, uh, they're equal to each other as well. So those are four things we can state. What we're going to look at here in part B is the inverse of that. So in other words, we can also, if we, if we can state these any of those four things, we can then state that the two lines are parallel. So if you look below here, <clears throat> and that may be common sense to some of you, um, but maybe not to everybody. So if you look below here, we don't know that these two lines are parallel. But if the alternate interior angles are equal, so let's throw some numbers on here. Let's say these were each 44 degrees. If those were equal to each other, then we can state that these two lines are parallel. So that's kind of the inverse. In part A, we learned that if two lines are parallel, the four properties are true. And in part B, what we're going to learn is if the four properties are true, so if we had alternate interior angles that were equal to each other, then we can state that the two lines are parallel. Or if we have two corresponding angles, let's say that these two angles here were 44 degrees, we could then state that these two lines are parallel because the corresponding angles would be equal to each other. We'll look at a few examples following here, which might help you out. Uh, we can also state that, for example, if the interior angles on the same side of the transversal, let's see these two angles here, add up to 180, then the two lines are parallel. If they don't add up to 180 degrees, <clears throat> then they would not be parallel to each other. So that's kind of the goal of part B. We don't know that the two lines are parallel, but if one of these four properties, and the last one, that if alternate exterior angles are equal to each other, then we can state that the two lines are parallel. And if they aren't equal, then the two lines are not parallel. So <clears throat> if we look at the following examples, we'll look at a few of them. It says, in each diagram, is AB parallel to CD? Explain why or why not. <clears throat> and you may have to find other angle measures. In this case, if you look at these two angles here, those two angles are alternate exterior to each other and they're equal. So if these alternate exterior angles are equal to each other, then those two lines are parallel. So the answer here would be, is AB parallel to CD? Yes. And that's because alternate exterior angles are equal. And something that I want to teach you as well is how to name these angles. You cannot call these angles just angles H and angle G because there's multiple angles meeting at point G and H. So if you want to name a, an angle where multiple angles meet, you have to name the three letters that they're named by. Okay, so here, uh, this angle down here, this 70 degree angle would be called CHF because it goes from C to the vertex H to the letter F. So I'm just going to name it angle CHF is equal to, and the angle up here, this alternate exterior angle, would be E, G, B. If you have questions about that, you can just ask me in class. All right, the next example, are these two parallel to each other? Your initial uh, idea might be that these are not parallel to each other because these are not the same number. But if we investigate a little bit more closely, let's not use a parallel line property. We might have to find a different angle. If I use this straight line here, for example, what I know is that this angle is 95 degrees because angles on a line add up to 180 degrees. So that these two numbers add up to 180, 85 and 95. And at this point in time, we can look at these two angles 
and are they do they have any of the properties are they alternate interior corresponding interior same side of transversal any of those properties in this case they're corresponding and they're equal to each other so are they parallel yes i would say because corresponding angles are equal and if i wanted to name those angles again uh, the angles would be named this would be bgh so that's angle b G H is equivalent to angle, and the corresponding angle below it is D H F. All right, just a couple more. Uh, difficult one. We're going to have to work our way towards not using any parallel line properties because we don't know that these are parallel lines yet. We're going to have to wait, work our way towards finding out if they are parallel or not. Um, this 100 degree angle and the 80 degree angle are not alternate exterior because they have different transversals. The 100 degree angle is on that blue transversal and the 80 degree angle is on that pink transversal. So those are not related by alternate exterior angles. <clears throat> so uh, what we're going to have to do is work our way towards some sort of property. So what I know is that this angle is 80 degrees because 180 adds up to angles on a line. What I also know, again, you can't use uh, parallel line properties, so here's a triangle. We know that the remaining angle inside that triangle is 70 degrees. And then finally, what you might want to do is, again, not using a, pro a parallel line property, 70 degrees is vertically opposite to this angle here. Okay, so those not even using parallel lines, have to be 70. And at this point in time, we have a parallel line property. The relationship between this 80 and 70 is that they're corresponding. However, for those two lines to be parallel, those angles would have to be equal. So in this case, these are not parallel lines because the corresponding angles are not equal to each other. And those angles, I could call them angle G, J, B, which is the 80 degree angle, is not equal to angle J, K, D. Okay, and last example, before you try some on your own, it says name two pairs of parallel segments, state the reason for your answer. At this moment, this kind of looks like a jumbled mess. You might want to turn your page around. Uh, here's an investi investigation we can look at. And again, these take a long time to try and find by yourself. So. Don't get down on yourself if it takes a long time to identify. <clears throat> I'm, I'm theorizing that these might be parallel. So is there a parallel line property that I can investigate to determine if they are? And in this case, if you look here, that looks like a Z. So these two angles, if those two lines are to be parallel, those two angles should be equal because those are alternate interior. And they are. So those two line segments, which are now green, so I'd say line segment BF, is parallel to line segment EH, and that's because the alternate interior angles are equal to each other. Or in other words, uh, angle BFE is equal to FEH. Okay, and one more parallel line set. Again, you'll get better at this. You'll start looking for similar angles or angles that add up to 180 or use some non-parallel properties in order to identify them. In this case, what I see is that these 32, 35 degree angles, if I use them as parallel lines, AF and CD, uh, those two angles are corresponding. They fall with kind of within the F. So those, that, those 35 degree angles, because they're equal to each other, those two blue lines right now must be parallel. So line segment AF is parallel to line segment CD, and that's because corresponding angles are equal. And I can name those angles. That would be angle AFG is equivalent to angle CDF.